Hello everyone and welcome back to my playthrough of Alone in the Dark. Last time we finished the campaign as Edward Carnby. And uh, I must say I was a little underwhelmed. And to be perfectly honest, the more I thought about it, the less sense the ending made. Like, um, the, if that tree was there the whole time, and Mags, uh, the housekeeper, at one point said... You have no idea about that tree. I mean, it's clearly been there a long time. Like, the conservatory was built around it, right? What, what was the point of the whole story? It was just a big sacrifice. What was the point of, like, going through the psyche of Jeremy and uh, Carnby's as well? And, like, all these memories with the steamboats and the Egyptian pyramid. Like, what was the point? It literally, literally had nothing to do with the last, what, half hour of the game? Not even half hour, 15 minutes of the game. Literally had nothing to do with it. I, I, as I said, the more I thought about it, the less sense it made. But my hope is we're going to play as Emily Hartwood now. And at the end, it's all going to make sense. It's all going to be clear as day. This, this is the second half of the story that we've been missing. So, without further ado, let's start a brand new game. We're going to go standard again. Um, I'm kind of tempted to go easy just because the combat sucks, but I'll keep it standard. And we're going to go, we're going to stay with modern because, god damn it, this, this thing's broken. You're pretty auto with Delia. Yeah, that's, that's fine. And I'm going to listen to the, the the beginning again. I'm going to listen to the story. Just in case there's anything I missed. It's only a couple of minutes anyway. You guys can skip it if you want. Yeah. And I got my light set up a little bit different, so if I'm illuminated a little bit differently, that's why. This way, I can actually see the fucking game, and light's not blurring so, right in my eyes. So, your uncle, what's wrong with him? Everything. He's possessed. As in the devil? El Diablo. Something like that. He says a dark man is following him, watching him at all times. What do you make of it? It's nonsense, of course. But I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. You see, it runs in my family. Possession? No, detective. Deteriorating melancholy. Practically every member of the Hartwood family is driven mad before they grow old. Does that include Emily? But Jeremy didn't kill himself. Is that why he's at your setup? Despite being convinced that he is truly possessed, he decided to put his last chips on Dr. Gray and his psychoanalysis, figuring he might stumble upon some cure. It's a good thing he knew to turn there, because I didn't see any sign of his street of a road. I received a disturbing letter from Jeremy accusing the staff and all the other patients of being involved in some cult. And now they are also out to him. Could it be real? Or is it all just in his head? It's a story he tells himself, Mr. Carnby. Anything to avoid the truth. Which is? That we're all terribly insignificant. That people mean so very little to one another. That there is no one out to get Jeremy Hartwood because he isn't worth getting. Here we are. My uncle's not well, Mr. Carnby. I want to make sure he's all right. Then what's my part in this? You couldn't get a cab? I just wouldn't feel safe going alone. Did you bring a gun? Yeah. You think it'll actually come to that? 
No. But you might need to wave it around depending on how agreeable the staff will be. What exactly are we going to do when we find Jeremy? I don't know. Let's just find him first. All right, so let's choose Emily and let's start her off. Hello? It's so quiet. Where is everyone? This is a big place. Maybe they're on the other side of the house. Stay here. I'll have a look. Wait, are we just going to the same areas as as Emily now? Okay, I I really hope it's not a retread of the same fucking game just with her. Surprised by her own reckless decision, Emily found herself breaking into DeSetto. She mulled over how to present her story in case she got caught, but couldn't think of anything that sounded convincing. She wasn't much of a fast talker. Best to find a way to open the front door and let Detective Khan be inside so he can handle the situation. See, this makes no sense. It makes more sense that Edward do this and she wait by the front door. Oh, lordy. Okay. All right, all right. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt. What's this? It's a clue. She also gets flustered after running six feet. Yeah, beat for beat so far. Bullets. Oh, hey, there's eyes. Are you a little kitty cat? Maybe not. Don't know what you are. I can't see in there, no matter how much light I shine through there. Okay. I thought there was someone there for a minute. Well, I don't think I'll be able to get in there. No, you don't think so? Have you tried? So I know there was some kind of lanyard here before, but it's not there now. So I guess they load with the different chapters. Whatever sense that makes. Okay. Yeah. Gonna hear whispers? No. Interesting. <sighs> so maybe only Carnby can hear the whispers. She drinks too. It's so funny. I would have thought hers would be like at least bandages or something, not not a drink. 
Because let's be honest, Emily Harwood seems a little conservative to, to drink, you know? Not that she's uptight necessarily, but y you know what I mean. I'll just take this. Yeah, you do, you do that. You do you, Emily. You do you. Every day your silence weighs a little heavier. It's yeah, I'm not gonna listen to all that again. It's we already listened to that one. Ah, bullets in the freezer. Excellent tactic. No, why can't we take the cleaver as a weapon? Makes perfect sense. No land yet? Wait, actually. Yeah, look at that, look at that. So how many are we missing? We're missing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we're missing 11. We got quite a lot as Carnby. Okay. Some bullets there. I need all the bullets we can get. That was a door. Here. So I've actually watched one or two, like, um, Spoiler-free reviews, just to kind of see what other people thought of the game. I generally like to play games on my own first before I before I watch other people's reviews. I don't really tend to follow reviewers anyway. I just like to get an idea of what other people think, you know? Um, Please do not touch the boiler. And a lot of people are saying, like... That doesn't look so a lot of people saying like this was this game was so close to perfection, um, it just missed the mark by like that much. I don't know what they're saying, man. I'm not saying I flat out hate the game. I just see it as wasted potential. Like you got two fairly A-list actors, maybe not necessarily A-list, but definitely B-list actors. Like I don't know if you consider David Harbor A-list per se. Don't get me wrong, I love David Harbor. But these guys are not this great. Like, it's Jodie Comer sounds like she's just phoning it all in. You know what I mean? David Harbour, it's... You could tell, like, on some days he cares, on other days he doesn't. You know what I mean? Now, what's this? And I don't necessarily blame him. The story is is a mess, from what I can tell. Sunday, June twenty second. I spent all day looking for Jeremy. Yeah, we've already read this one. Okay. So I feel like the beginning area is just the same. Yeah, yeah. I need the key. Need the key. Go upstairs. It's wet shut. Is it? Oh, fiddle dee dee. It looks important. That door definitely looks important. It's very regal, very... Um, stands out quite a bit.
And it really is such a shame, because I... Like, no one wants to make these games with um, the pick I in post. Okay, this is The new. Great Depression. President Hoover raises tariffs on over 20,000 imported goods in an act to protect American labor. Following the collapse of the Wall Street stock market on October 24 last year, American industry has suffered greatly. Thousands of companies have gone bankrupt and left a large part of the American workforce unemployed. In an attempt to turn the tide, the Smoot-Hawley Tariff Act has been signed by President Herbert Hoover. By regulating commerce with foreign countries, the government hopes to encourage the industries of the United States to compete with cheap foreign imports. <laughs> Superstition on rise. New Orleans voodoo stores and spiritual mediums see increased profit during troubled times. I bet. While the market has faced hard times ever since Black Thursday of last year, voodoo doctors and snake charmers see significant rise in number of customers. With the coming eve of St. John on the 23rd, the police expect increased cult activity around Bayou St. John, the southern shore of Lake Pontchartrain. Voodoo rituals in that area on the eve of St. John have a long tradition reaching back to the first snake worshippers brought as slaves from West Africa. During the 19th century, its practice was popularized by the legendary Marie Laveau and has since been embraced by many of the Creoles and the surviving aristocracy of the French Quarter. Author Seeks Asylum Rumors regarding author Cassandra Beauregard making Dorsetto her home verified. Dorsetto Hospital is an old plantation building on the eastern shores of Lake Pontchartrain. While often considered an asylum for the insane, residing Dr. Elmore Lee Gray prefers to think of it as a convalescent home, a place where you can go to rest. The patient list is kept secret, but thought to include many of the black sheep of wealthy families, because at Dorsetto, treatment does not come for free. Is it anywhere? Local author Cassandra Beauregard has now been confirmed by her own admission. She's been lauded as a powerful Creole voice and written many successful books. Lately it was reported from Hollywood that she has finished a moving picture manuscript titled Slaughter Gulch. That film is set to hit the theaters next year. Interesting. Yeah, like I was saying, like, nobody aims to make, like, bad games, and, you know, you, you, people should be given credit where credit's due, you know, when the when they spend a lot of time, like, months, years, as I said before, like, creating these games, you know, putting their hard work and effort into it. It really is such a shame. Like, this is what you have to show for it, you know, a game that's panned. Wait, don't... No. Excuse me? Do you know where I can find Jeremy Hartwood? Of course not. McCarthy, what are you doing? I told you not to lose sight of the girl. Don't you worry, Mags. I'll find that little rascal. Who are you people? What are you doing here? I'm sorry about all this, but I'm looking for my uncle. His name is Jeremy Hartwood. What are you doing, child? You shouldn't be alone. Go find McCarthy. Who are you? Are you here for the Fay Dodo? Go upstairs now. My name is Emily Hartwood. I, I, I'm the niece of Jeremy Hartwood. This is Detective Carnby. The police? Why are you here? No, I'm a private investigator. Sorry to bother you. My client's worried about her uncle. He's a patient here at Dresetto. If you don't mind, could you direct us where to find him? No, I can't. Jeremy has gone missing. If you leave your information, I will make sure to contact you. Wait, he ran away? No, he won't leave the house. He's around here somewhere, and both of our orderlies are looking for him. That's unacceptable. Where's Dr. Gray? I want to speak with him immediately. Fine, I'll ask him. Wait here and don't touch anything. <laughs> Oh, fuck off. Do you want to see Jeremy's room? Can you show us? Follow me. May. A 
love how no one comments on those statues. Thank you. Did you just kiss her? Like strange kid. Seriously. Mm. Let's look around, see what we can find. Jeremy had gone missing. The housekeeper said the staff at their Cerro was looking for him. But Emily wanted answers and demanded to speak to Dr. Gray, the man in charge. While waiting, a young girl offered to show Emily and Detective Comby inside Jeremy's room. The perfect opportunity to look for clues regarding Jeremy's disappearance. Can we leave? I'm not done here yet. I guess not. All right, before we touch any of that, <clears throat> let's have a chat with Mr. Carnby here. If the game will let me. What kind of stuff are we looking for? I've never been part of an investigation before. Letters, diaries, receipts, all sorts of notes. That's it. I've read about police analyzing teeth marks and blood samples and fingerprints to find criminals. Is that something you can do? No, that sounds more like the way the Bureau of Investigation does things. But, you know, if you do find teeth or blood, it's still worth mentioning. Do, do, now, do they have to be human teeth or can they be animal teeth? What about baby teeth? Does that count? We should talk to Dr. Gray when we're done here. He's the one who runs the hospital. He must know something about what's happened. Yeah, I just want to get a feel of what we're dealing with here first. Of course. Uh, seems morbid, seems very gloomy, and seems very morose. Do you concur? Every night the dark man's... Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna reread all that stuff. Everything looks the same anyway. The painted tile. Mr. Combe. Have you ever seen anything like this? Looks like a talisman. You mean like this one? Can you find me a knife to cut the canvas? I want to take this with me. You want to take the painting? Sure, I'll find one. Found this tube as well. Should keep it safe for you. Do you want to carry it or should I? Miss Hartwood. Emily. I'll take it. Thank you. We're done here, right? I'm not sure. I don't know how to do any of this. Listen, I think we should talk to Doctor Gray. He must know something about what's going on around here. Okay. Let's do that. Come on, I don't want to be here all night. Detective Carnby? Where did... If you really think about it, this story 
It makes more sense from her point of view. What on earth is happening? What is this place? Is what she called the melancholy delusion or something like that? Emily had never seen the French Quarter quite like this, dark and alien. The only possible refuge she could see from Jeremy's balcony was a bit of light coming from a corner store. They called it like the Heartwood Curse, right? Like it, this shit runs in her family. This makes more sense as her story as opposed to Carnby, who was somehow a mental patient here and he doesn't remember and no one ever mentions it. You know what I mean? Oh, Jesus. That door got the better of her. <laughs> Alright. Oh my god, her... She's so far much better at this. Oh, I stand corrected. Ooh, damn. She had killed the horrid thing. But what was it? And would there be more? She's got an automatic, man. What the hell was that thing? I saw you, fuck. Oh, I, that was my stupidity. This gun seems stronger than Carnby's. And that's another thing. I'm, I'm really sorry. I keep on nitpicking about shit. Why did Carnby only have one clip with him? And and doesn't even have an auto loader. Like, I, I get it. Like, who sees this much combat in their lives? You know, fighting monsters and shit. But I mean, come on. If you have a fucking revolver... Chances are you're going to have an auto auto loader with you. You know what I mean? Just instead of spending fucking put the bullets in, just clip and that's it. You're good to go. All right, all right. Enough with the nitpicking. Let's just play the fucking game. Uh, I'm guessing that's where I need to go. See some more bullets. I can't go that way. No? I'm sure if you really tried hard enough, you really could. But we both are not going to put that much effort be. into it. I, I... This is what I'm saying. She's just voting uh, this can't be. Like, horrific monsters are coming at you. You're like, this can't be. You got transported to a different fucking dimension. Not, not a different dimension. We like transported elsewhere. And you're like, this can't be. All right, I'll shut up. All right. I can't go that way. I'm aware. All right, let's just go in there. So I'm going to have to go down that alleyway anyway. What's the point of this? Is just to alert the monsters to you? Batiste? How'd you 
get here? I was back at Dorsetto, looking for my Uncle Jeremy. Jeremy's your uncle? I didn't know. Why would you? You're still working at Dorsetto? Yeah, both me and Lada stuck around. We're real orderless now. Y you remember my sister Lada, don't you? What happened, Batiste? How are we here? You know about the dark man haunting your uncle? I'm familiar with his mental state. I think we all in his head somehow. Because these streets are real, but they're not like on any map. Nah, this is like when you remember something, but in the wrong way. Do you know how to get back to Dorsetto? I'm not safe here. Truer words have yet been spoken, Mrs. Marcus. Don't call me that. It's Miss Emily Hartwood. There's no reason to call me anything else. I'm sorry, Miss Emily. I'm just trying to tell you like it is. This place ain't safe for no one. There's evil hiding in the dark. How do I get back? Only Jeremy knows how. He has this juju necklace guiding him. You mean this talisman? Mm-hmm. Just like it. He says it's been protecting him. Ever since he got it from Miss Jackson down the street. You know where it came from? Have you been there? I was there no more than one hour ago looking for Jeremy. Locked it up to keep the ghouls from getting inside. You can have the key if you want. Thank you. I'll take a look. Stay safe, miss. I think I've been calling Batiste's uh, sister Mags this whole time. I think Mags was the person that we met at the front door. I, I mean Lottie. I, I, I apologize about that. So Max is like the, the 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 bitch who prevents us from doing anything. But Lottie's like the Batista surf. That that's why I meant. Emily couldn't understand where she was, but it felt like a waking dream. Batiste, who she vaguely remembered from her past, claimed to work as an orderly at Dersetto. He was also looking for Jeremy and seemed to imply that he was chasing him through Jeremy's own mind. Maybe this wasn't Emily's dream, but Jeremy's, and she was trapped inside somehow. Baptiste suspected that Jeremy was in some control due to a talisman that he had been given by a Miss Jackson, a name Emily recalled to be one of the many voodoo witch doctors in the French Quarter. In hope to find a way back to Desetto, Emily set out to find Miss Jackson's place. Who's narrating? I don't think we ever figured that out. I, I hope you don't mind, Batiste. I'm just gonna steal all the bullets from your from your shop here. All the randomly placed bullets. Hope you're okay with that. Are you staying here? For a while, want to see if Jeremy shows up. And she's called uh, Marcus. Her last name's Marcus. Is that a family name or her husband's name? Your sister. She also works at Dorsetto. Yeah, she the one who got us jobs. Be careful, okay? You said it, Miss. There's almost no incentive to talk to these people because they don't really offer up anything new. Just like they repeat. They repeat what's been said already. I'm out of bullets. I'm out of bullets. It, it still cracks me up. Oi. We'll, we'll wait for him. He'll come back. Oh, 
always come back. Hey, <laughs> got him. Great. Oh, fantastic. Emily's gun is not as strong. Ooh. That's nasty, man. Emily's gun is not that strong. But or faster. Well, it is kind of faster. I don't know. It's still slow. Let's put it that way. I need to replenish my bullets. I can't the go that way. Yeah, yeah. The biggest problem I have with this game is the fact that if you don't have a weapon, you can't attack, like do physical attacks. And yet they're very string stingy with the bullets, and you could only have like so many of each type. You know what I mean? I get like they'll spawn like how it was on the steamboat. They can randomly spawn, but still. Yeah, buddy. Come on. I know you want to come down. There you go. Where was it? There it is. Wow. Great throw, Emily. Great. Hey, fucking throw. There you go. And hey, at least I'm getting better at the combat. Okay, I think that's everything. I'm gonna get ambushed over here. Come on. Oh shit. I don't want to waste bullets. I don't want to waste any more bullets on this mofo. Sorry, Miss Jackson. I barged right in. This must be Miss Jackson's place. Let's see if we can find out more about Jeremy's talisman. Never meant to pill for your place. Emily found this waking dream disturbingly persuasive. If this was Jeremy's world, what did that mean? Was the Hartwood family suffering a literal curse? Was the dark man? That ghoulish spectre haunting Jeremy, an actual supernatural being? Mm. Emily pushed her thoughts aside and focused. She needed to find out about the talisman and get back to Desetto. It looks exactly like Jeremy's talisman. 
Good thing that uh, she bought these in bulk. Okay, anything else? We cannot go there. Oh, look. Check it out. Lights off. Lights on. Lights off. Lights off. Out of existence. Back into existence. Okay. Uh, we want... Not sabotage. Uh, what are the numbers? Eight, five, three. Wait, what did that say? One second. Nope. Talisman plates and sockets. Okay. I think it's meant to hold the talisman. Uh, so it was eight, five, oh, three. I'm not sure what numbers I should use. Maybe there's something in Jeremy's notes. There we go. I always get confused. What's that picture in the glass? Where is that? That's here. What's behind that door? Good to see you again, Miss Hartwood. Mrs. Thompson told me you were here. She also alerted me that you brought a detective with you. I'm very curious to hear what this is all about. You don't remember me, do you, Miss Hartwood? We met at your family's house in the Garden District, when your uncle was about to be admitted under my care. No, I remember. Sorry. I'm not really feeling well. Oh, in that case, have a seat. Let me make you a drink. I don't seem to have made much of an impression on you. On the other hand, I can vividly recall you and your parents. Because of our cheerful disposition, I'm sure. You are far too intelligent to think that. You come from a joyless family, Miss Hartwood. The only amusement I took from my visit was discovering that the young lady's drink was an old-fashioned. Very astute. Is that supposed to make you seem attentive or intelligent? Both. Whatever you prefer. Are you ready to tell me why you are here, Miss Hartwood? And why you brought a detective? I received a letter from my uncle. He seemed certain that he was in danger here. If I find out you're treating him badly, I'll be taking him back with me to New Orleans. Really? Is he going to live with you in your tiny garçonniere? That would be a spectacular way to ratify your spinsterhood. Because you are well aware that your father would never let him back in his house. No, I have it. Maybe you can bring him back up north. You've been wanting to move back for quite a few years, haven't you? You always preferred your mother's side of the family. Jeremy is free to leave with you. I won't object. However, there is one problem, as you might have learned. He is, in fact, missing. Do you know where he could have gone? No, I'm afraid I don't. I have my staff looking for him. I'm sure he will show up eventually. Especially if he learns that you are here. He is quite fond of you. What can you tell me about his condition? I never heard a proper diagnosis. What is your medical opinion of him? Well, let me think. He is an anxious man. Depressed, even. He suffers from a perceived lack of order in his inner and outer life. He constantly complains about events not presenting themselves according to their divine nature. In the Dark Man? Hard to tell if it was ever anything specific. Jeremy uses the Dark Man as a psychological scapegoat to avoid facing the truth that he is in any way at fault. You don't think there can be any truth to the Dark Man's... supernatural existence? Why would you ask that? I... Can we ever be sure? If the Dark Man is some sort of evil presence that is in possession of Jeremy? Well... I assure you, any evidence that you experience supporting that claim is purely delusional. Don't get caught up in mass hysteria, Miss Hartwood. 
You wouldn't want to take your uncle's place in this hospital, would you? Uh, I'll be leaving now, Doctor. I need to keep looking for my uncle. Do so, Miss Hartwood. I'll let you know if he shows up. You know, he's quite the smarmy prick for someone who lost a patient. You know, someone under his care. Like, you can get in a lot of trouble for that. Detective Carnby! God, I'm... I'm glad to see you. I was afraid you had left. Me? You're the one who just disappeared. It's... hard to explain. I think I blacked out. I... It was like I went somewhere else. It's okay, miss. You're clearly upset. No, it's... I don't know what's happening. This is a very stressful situation for you, I understand? Ugh, no, you don't understand. Just take a deep breath. Why don't you sit down, smoke some of the Perique. If you want, I could even drive you back to New Orleans. I just want to have a talk with Dr. Gray first. I want to stay. I found a talisman just like the one in the painting. I think I might be able to figure out where Tarawea is, where Jeremy wanted to go. That's great. Just stay out of trouble, okay? Let me handle the investigation. I'm not crazy, Detective. Not yet. <laughs> okay, catch you later. This game. Despite making a fool of herself in front of Dr. Gray and Detective Conby, Emily felt surprisingly invigorated. She felt absolutely sure that it was her manipulation of the talisman that had brought her back to Decetto. Jeremy mentioned two items in his commonplace book that somehow connected him to two more dreams, or whatever they should be called. If Jeremy had two more worlds open to him, then maybe he would hide there if he was scared. Or maybe he found a way to tear away the place Jeremy so desperately wanted to visit. Excited to follow up on her clues, Emily set out to find the old clock and the boiler. If a talisman like this can open up doors between the French Quarter and Dorsetto, then maybe Jeremy is hiding in some strange other world. Like Tarawea, the place he mentioned in the book. No matter where he is, it's clear that my search won't be limited to Dorsetto. Though needless to say, this playthrough isn't exactly what I thought it would be. Paul, you're right about the plates on the boiler and the clock. Yeah. Saw you notice in the boiler room. Yeah. We, we've seen all these before. Dr. Elmore. Yeah. Um, I legitimately thought it was going to be the other side of what we were seeing with Carmby's, uh, with Carmby's story. Clearly I was wrong. Um, disappointingly so. We're not gonna go through all that again. It's all up, looks sturdy. Doubt I'll be opening this. Uh, what was the code? Is it like nine three six or something? Nine three six. Ah, whatever. That's okay. Don't want to break the game. Cause God knows this game can't handle it. Library. The library. Let's head upstairs first. Let's uh let's investigate a little. Hmm. <laughs> Why would you have me be able to click it? Just to say, hmm. You're bad. 
Jeremy's room. All back to normal. Emily's here. Emily's here. Emily's here. Yeah, see, this all seems to make more sense uh, with Emily as the character of this uh, of this campaign. With Emily as the main character of this campaign. What is this? Boxing, eh? my objective investigate the small parlor okay what a strange but beautiful room I did it I crossed the thread yep seen that one the Astarte Artist Colony. I'm pretty sure they had a Mardi Gras crew called the Pirates of Pontchartrain when I was a child. The simple astrologist cipher was a favorite among the artists who lived in the house 20 years ago. They easily turned into numbers when needed, but also acted as signatures for the members, as there were only 12 of them. Makes sense. Uh, nope. There's some aggressive looking rot on these paintings. It's aggressively progressive. Uh, no. No. William Argus, Franklin Mosick, and Nora Keith. So, William, Franklin, and Nora. Do I need to remember how to get them out again? Okay, so William, Franklin, and Nora. 294. And then... So two is Pisces, nine is Libra, and four is Taurus. So Pisces, Libra, Taurus. So I don't remember what the astro astrological signs are, like what matches what. So Pisces, I know I'm a Pisces. Uh, horseshoe and Taurus, I guess. Looks like a bull. Looks like a lot of bull. Hmm, are these zodiac signs? Got it in one. That one. That one. There you go. Oh, Atta girl. And the music died. Oh, yeah. I remember. <gasps> dun dun dun. Oh, that's nasty. There we go. Ew. Yeah. I need the key. Suddenly, Jeremy's bleak dreamscape devoured Emily, drowning her in dread and darkness. Only to moments later spit her out again. What had happened and why? Was that her doing or did someone else make it so?
And we'll never know. That's the sad thing. We will Everything never know. Back to normal. We'll never know what's causing it. Is it Emily? Is it Jeremy? Is it Darkman? No Kluman. I need the key. I'm a sprinting. I'm sorry, what did you call me? Try the keys you got from Batiste. Uh, don't I have that one? No, I don't. I don't think I did. Yep. I'm aware. I'm fully aware. Yes. Can you get out of my way so I can fucking see? Okay. Nothing there. Nothing there. down the stairs you know mr. Waits no what's that stain looks like some kind of rot stain where where you gotta be more specific oh there it is another one of those plates for the talisman. It's all so broken and missing some pieces. That it is. That it is. Uh, oh, can I not go in here? I cannot. They locked it. Bitches. Squiggy, anyone down here? I need the key. Okay, so coming down here seems to be a big waste of time. But that's all I got. Just but. Up in the stairs, I go. Why, hello, Ruth. At least we're getting some different cutscenes. So is that. Now, why was she in a locked room? Hey. She's cool and calm and collected all of a sudden. With a lot of glitter in her, in her boots. Smoke Good bellowing evening, from her Ms. mouth. Good evening, Miss Hartwood. That is your name, isn't it? I would uh, be terribly embarrassed if it wasn't. You're right. Emily Hartwood, Jeremy's niece. Nice to meet you. Ruth. Ruth Talon. Oh. Is that Perrique you're smoking? <laughs> How terribly quaint. Maybe so. But I like it. Would you care to share some? That smell is making me feel very nostalgic. Hey. Looks like Miss Talon swings both ways. Sexual deviant and all. Oh, lighting your cigarette for her. Is 
Is it all that you hope for? I enjoy your light mockery, Miss Hartwood. I can tell we would make great friends. How flattering. Too bad you're locked up in this place. <laughs> your insincerity is really refreshing. I wish you were mad as I am. Then you could stay. Give it a few years and I might just be. Lunacy is one of my family's few privileges. <laughs> oh good, I'll be looking forward to it. <laughs> You don't know anything about what happened to Jeremy, do you? Everyone here is really strange, and it's hard to know what to make of anything you hear. Occasionally, it sounds quite exciting, though. Good versus evil and all that. I'm sorry, but I don't think I have anything useful to share. It doesn't matter. Thank you for the much-needed break. Bon voyage. Talk about a pointless cutscene. And cut. There we go. Emily felt surprised by how much she enjoyed the company of Ruth. There was something familiar and friendly about her. Like they were old friends that simply forgot about each other. Yes, old friends. If by friends you spell, if you spell friends L O V E R S, then yes. Lost plantations of Louisiana. Oh, we've definitely heard that one before. Ooh, some more banter. Are you reading anything good? A Brightness from Afar by Lord Boleskin. It's actually not bad. You know where Detective Carnby is? Oh, you don't need him. You're doing fine. I should probably go. Until next time, Cherie. I thought she was going to be like, no, don't go. Yeah, shotgun, baby. Now this will come in handy. Yeah, don't uh, don't mind me taking the shotgun from the fucking wall and using it for my own devices. It's wet shot. Is it? Is it gonna change again. Yep. That makes two of us. You know, the housekeepers really should uh, do a better job clean this place up because these have been here since the beginning. Can't go down here, right? Yeah, won't even let us. Let me hear whispers now. See out there, it seems. Nothing in here. Oh, that's Mags. Margaret. 
What are you doing sneaking around? You almost scared me to death. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disturb your ritual. I wouldn't have guessed voodoo was in practice at a place like this. The doctor may be all about science, but I know these roots have power. Do you know what's going on here? I have a feeling Dorsetta was cursed. No. There are several players with stakes in this game. Dorsetto isn't cursed or blessed. It's a battleground. And it would all be a lot better if you could get your uncle out sooner than later. And help us find him. Trying to do. Seriously. I wish you the best of luck, Miss Harwood. I really mean that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to look after my gumbo. Is that is that how you spell gumbo? G O M B O. Wow, littering. Now let's dig up what she dug. In. The housekeeper buried something in the flower patch beneath one of Dr. Gray's windows. She was singing in some Creole language, performing a peculiar bourgeois voodoo ritual. Certainly not an unfamiliar sight in the French Quarter, but voodoo had never felt this bitter to Emily. Never? Never ever? Forever, never? For never, ever? I know, right? So tiring. It worked. I mean, why wouldn't it? Hmm, what's this? I believe it's called a water hose. I know. How quaint. What's that? I believe it's called a water hose. <sighs> the eyes, eyes are still there. I'll fucking shoot you, bro. See, I'm scared of you. Well, it's not scared of my bullets. The fuck was that? Is that back there? Guess so. Well, this thing's not. Uh, not scared by my those some really bad eyes eh? looks like a JPEG file or something okay you do you do you man there's like no depth to this thing there we go this thing's like thin as fuck look at it like the, there's no real back to it like there is a back but it's like you know what I mean Looks like it's this thin, whatever it is. Anyway, moving on. So, repair the decorative plate on the boiler, find the astronomical clock. On the boiler. So I got a while to go before we get to the boiler. Um, and everything's done there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then regarding up here, small parlor.
I'm guessing the yeah, the puzzle is the wedge. Oh, Ruthie? No, Ruthie? Oh. I guess she got bored. It's blocked. I remember. Ah! Oh! Ooh! Nice. Got a double hit. Ruth there? Okay, that wasn't so bad. No. No Ruth. Go, man, go. Uh, bu -bu -bu right. This away. You know, if I had gone up the ladder, we would have missed that entire area. Maybe put, put away the pickaxe. So people don't see you running around with it. There you go. That, uh, what people, right? Unless it's a story beat, we never run into anyone. This must be the clock mentioned in the commonplace book. Is it? This looks like the thing that held the talisman in the French Quarter, but it's broken and missing some pieces. Is it? The old clock was an intricate machine with eccentric astronomic motifs, but nothing appeared particularly unusual to Emily. But then she discovered a large decorative plate that reminded her of Miss Jackson's ritual bench, where she had configured the talisman to open the door back to Desetto. The clock's plate had unfortunately been sabotaged. But if she could piece the plate back together, she figured she would be able to repeat the procedure and maybe open up to another world. A whole new world. I think I've seen this somewhere. Yeah, I know you have, but it's okay. We don't we don't need it. Uh that that clearly does not go there. That clearly does not go there. Uh, nope. There it goes there. And that uh, goes uh, there. And that goes uh, there. And that goes uh, there. So... No, does not go there. Does that go there? No. There was something in the commonplace book about this. Was there? Are you sure? Are you positive? Don't think that's right. That looks right there. That looks somewhat right there. There we go. Did it break? The clock just stopped. So we want three, four, six. Hmm. Uh, so this would be six. Before would be three. It's showing me something. That's just the hallway outside Jeremy's room, isn't it? Maybe. Dun dun dun. I 
was gonna go back because I I was like, didn't we check Jeremy's suitcase? Emily deserved a sense of triumph, but she was too on edge to appreciate her success. There was no reasonable explanation why the talisman let her open up this other world. Was this really happening? Or was this somehow all in her mind? There was no time to question her own sanity. She had to find Jeremy. If he was here, she thought, would she find Jeremy in the hateful mound? The mound of hatred. Oh my god, that's with the light. Uh, can we go back in there? No, we cannot. Wow, we're somewhere in the bayou. I did it. I opened up another dream. Hooray. You did good for you. Amazing stories. Again, we've seen all this <clears throat> stuff before. I'm gonna try my best to kind of breeze on through as best I can. Okay. But I also kind of want to explore to make sure I pick up Lanyaps as best I can. I'm sure there's like a, a, one or two I missed in Carmby's playthrough, but what evs, yo, what evs. May 1923. You've seen that one. Wow. <gasps> Bullets. Nothing. Bullets. Nothing. I need the key. You need the key. That is not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Oh. I hate the sound of flies, man. I really hate the sound of flies. Puts me on edge. Jetty key. Mm. Hmm. Fascinating. I found a key. Yes. What the fuck? That was. That was disorientating. I'm full up, baby. Okay. Can always come back for those bullets. Uh, the jetty. Blue, blue. There's something missing. Is it a lever? Is it a lever? What's up, fellas? I feel for you guys. Stuck for eternity out in the swamps. Full of bullets. Pickaxe. Mm. Ah. Should have doged. Should have doged. Let's see if they're gonna come up here. Nope, they don't. Yeah, you guys just stay there.
might as well. Ooh. Can we get that? To go around? Oh, fuck <laughs> off. Yeah, that looked like it hurt. Got him good, boys. Come on. I know there's a second monster. There he is. Oh, he got, he got fucked up. I can break this. I just need to... That said, that would have been kind of funny. Ooh, an OR. I don't know how this thing could be used as a weapon. I feel like after like two hits, it would just break. In real life, I mean. It doesn't. She doesn't make a bleh, bleh sound. I feel more comfortable with a shovel than I do with an ore. Let's be honest. Let us be quite fair. Uh, not there. Uh, that's a showable. Right, and I can't go in there. Let us go. Look at all them bats. That's, that's a lot of fucking bats, man. Or birds. For all I know. Oh, shit. My 
See, why is there music? Like, what is that supposed to signify? Assuming we're in Jeremy's mind and none of this is real. Want to snick? Oh, I need a weapon. Uh, no grapple. I feel like this game is kind of wanting to be like um, the. Uh, the evil within mixed with I don't know Resident Evil if you haven't played Evil Within it's a trippy ass game man especially 2 2 is fucked up Um, yeah, I, I liked Evil Within 2 more. Sorry, is something chasing me? I can't tell if something's chasing me or if uh, it's just the sign of a windmill or something. I don't know. Not a windmill sign, but you know, the sound of a windmill. Um, yeah, Evil Within 1 was like pure survival horror uh, at its basis. Um, and it was. And it was difficult as fuck. Like, it was a, that was a hard ass game. Like, expect to die a lot in that game. Um, and the story was nonsense. Like the writing was was bizarre. Um, and when I say bizarre, it was like again, like bad voice acting, like very much a a callback to like the 90s like uh, the PlayStation 1 like horror titles uh, with like the bat translation like that's kind of what it seemed like I mean it, it was also like an Asian game but you know what I mean um, but Evil Within 2 I felt was a much stronger game oh I better go um, strong game in the sense like mechanically story wise and um, I thought I could drop down there. Um, Story-wise, um, and just the kind of feel they were going for. While the whole like ambience of Evil Within One was like terror, was like scary. Um, I wouldn't say it really scared me. It was like. There was a lot of terror, but it was like more like um, tension, a lot more tension because it was very easy to die in that game. And again, you were meant to die a lot. Just don't look down, Emily. But Evil Within 2, that legitimately had some good scares in that game. It wasn't as hard. It was more of an action game. 
if that makes sense. It was less survival horror, more action. I mean, there's still survival horror elements, but it was more action-based. But there were some legit scary moments in that game like that. I hadn't been that scared for like a long time. Why can I not? Okay. And some creative stuff too. I, I don't know why it was critically panned. Um, it wasn't as well liked as the first game. And I don't know why. I felt like Evil Within 2 had a, was really underrated. About that guy. Guess he wants a goat with horns. Yeah, and again, it's just like, what is that? Even Carmi was like, what the fuck? Instead of being like, what the fuck is that? Like, you know. Imagine if you were there, you wouldn't be like, huh? It's the hateful Mao Jeremy mentioned in his book. Yeah, like, I, I always secretly hope that there will be an Evil Within 3. There won't be. They, uh, because Evil Within 2 did not meet sales, the sales quotas. It's such a shame. Such a goddamn shame. But to be fair, I don't know where else they could have really taken the story. It was fairly definitive at the end of 2. But so I'm sure they could have figured something out. There were, there were some unanswered questions, but it was a pretty definitive story. A pretty definitive end, rather. Jeremy, you dropped your... Oh shit, Lottie's gone nuts. Mrs. Marcus? Get off of me! What are you doing here? Trying to find my uncle. Jeremy is your uncle? Could you please? How did Batiste know that but not Lottie? Thank you. The siblings. And it's Miss Hartwood. You don't remember me? I remember you, Mr. Bois. I met your brother, Batiste, earlier. I suppose he hadn't found Jeremy either then. We spread out to find him. Can I have this? I'm trying to get to Tarawea. Fine. Believe the rest. I just want Jeremy to come looking. We have to leave before it comes inside. What? Where? Come quick. Oh, God damn my soul. He already has. <sighs> oh, I'm back at Dorsetto. Extra bonus points if you can guess where that was from. He already had The dream of the grave under the chenier suddenly vanished, and Emily found herself back at Desetto. Instead of Jeremy, she found Lottie, who just like her brother Baptiste, reminded her of John, who died so bravely in the war. She pushed her painful memories out of her mind and returned to her investigation, she still needed to figure out what to do with the boiler. Indeed. Where's the bag? There it is. You know, it's convenient that um, he was a sculptor. And he had that fucking... Whatever it is. To, like, smooth out the... the to smooth out the side so we can use it to undo the wedges. Reflections on the power of the verb and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wet shut. I know. The pallet net, that's what it's called. It worked. <sighs> the barlow.
I don't have everything I need. I see they got rid of the music that would start and stop in here. I wonder if that was actually a glitch. Or maybe it's only on Carnby's playthrough. That could also very well be the, be the deal with that. Alright, let's head upstairs first and open this area up too. It's wet shut. Yes, I know. It worked. Like the last time. Why, hello. Oh. Let's do this side first, because so maybe we can unlock the door. Did we ever... Yeah, we need to look in his thing again. In the luggage. Oh, we don't have the key yet. I uh, forget when we get it. going on there happens too late for us to do anything about it Look at that police system I just realized is that holding a gurney but why One up again and offer it to Grace. Do you teach piano as well? Huh? You're a governess. Did you teach those clawing Casano kids how to play the piano? How do you know about that? Just because grown ups don't notice children doesn't mean we don't notice you. That's not an answer to yes. her question. I taught them some piano. And I'm surprised you're letting her get away with that. Not good enough to play a broken one. It fell from the attic. Brought half the ceiling down. It was Jeremy's fault, wasn't it? Nobody knows what happened. But you're not wrong. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna go now. See you around. Uh, uh, no, that's that's uh, no, that's not the correct reaction. 
the prick of the syringe hadn't hurt as much as the humiliation of being played by that child. Emily just couldn't make any sense of her behavior. Grace seemed amused, but not mocking. Was this just her being playful? As her feelings subsided, a second thought appeared. She wouldn't have injected her with something, would she? That is not the correct reaction. <laughs> um, <laughs> if a kid comes up to you and stabs you with a syringe and then... <laughs> I, I'm I'm yeeting that fucking kid off the fucking off the fucking roof. Like no, I, I humiliated. Oh, Jesus Christ! This fucking game. Can we at least inspect that syringe? It's not even here. It's fucking gone. You know, the very beginning, the first video I made, uh, one of the first thing I mentioned was the writer of Soma wrote this game. You would never guess. Like, it's... <laughs> it's like if... If fucking, I don't know, if, if Tarantino wrote what The Flash is now, like The Flash movie, you would never guess it's the same person. Never. I'm not saying that, like, the guy wrote Soma, I forget his name. His name is Casey at the moment. I'm not saying it was, like, he wrote, like, amazing screenplays or, like, amazing stories and shit. I'm not saying that. But to go from Soma to this? Woof, man. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they took the guy's story, gave it to some producer's fucking nephew. It's like, what, uh, tell me what you think of this. And then the kid, like, you know, three days later comes back with, like, crayon revisions with everything. And I don't want to hate this. I really don't want to hate this game. I really, really don't. And look, Hello. I don't mind surreal. There's more of that unsettling rot. I don't mind surreal narrative. Okay, I like Twin Peaks. I really do. Even X Files, like. I, not that it's surreal, but it's... I mean, so X-Files is more grounded, but, like, I, I don't really know what to compare. Like, I like Lynch's stuff. The, the stuff that I've watched, I like his stuff. This is not surreal. This is just, like... I, I don't know. You would never see this kind of thing in a Lynch show or a movie. Like, you would never see this in Twin Peaks. Like, I, I was comparing Twin Peaks, like, earlier in, in, like, I think the last episode. You would never see this kind of thing in Twin Peaks. On the commonplace of like it is insulting. I, I find this kind of thing insulting to my intelligence. Anyway. Did we ever find anything in here? I don't remember. Okay. 
So drawing room. Uh, oh yeah, that's where the telescope is. And now we can go to the sitting room upstairs. Okay. We need to. Now yeah, we need to go down there anyway for the boiler puzzle. Come on, Grace. I'm too tired for games. I'll even let's play with my jackknife. Oh, good evening. <laughs> you haven't seen a little girl by any chance, have you? I don't think so. Uh, you would have known if you did. The only kid crazy enough to be in this place. She's not in her room then? <laughs> that would be a first. Always running around causing trouble. She's very hard to pin down, that one. You want a sip? I'm good, thank you. Well, I should be going then. <clears throat> Unless there's anything you need from me. I just want to find my uncle before anything happens to him. Oh, don't worry, miss. He'll show up. <laughs> he is much too lily-livered to kill himself. Why would he? <laughs> it's his greatest ambition, didn't you know? Take care now. You didn't see a girl, did you? No, I don't think so, no. We literally just got stabbed by the little bitch. Not someone you would... Th not something you would forget about. Unless you just flat out lied to her. mows it off to continue his search for the little girl. Emily had meant to ask why he was looking for her, but decided against it, fearing that it would just prolong an already awkward scene. Yep. Gotta There's find Fritz. It's Fritz. Will someone drain this fucking water, please? Another thing I noticed, we pretty much have free access to this whole house. In the manor this huge, only two washrooms? Really? Uh, we'll come back here. Oh, whoops. Didn't mean to draw my gun. So this is Grace's room. Cute. Cute. Um, if it was me, I'd whip my dick out and just pee everywhere. Don't you worry, Grace. Hmm. I believe this was a lanyap, if I'm not mistaken. I think we already got it. Yeah. So I'm just looking in the mirror because um, I have to look in uh, Elizabeth's room. Remember how it was like Army was like super small. Now, now it seems like she's super tall. I mean, I know it's like I don't know. It's so weird. It is so fucking weird. All right, let's do this. I think we're missing a bottle, or was it in here? I think it was in there. This must be the great Cassandra oh, no, right Beauregard's room. Oh, my God. Sure what I expected. Maybe something more extravagant? Wow. Miss Beauregard. These people are all just passive aggressive, aren't they? 
What's that? I think this was here. Yeah. Let's Post write this down. Two five seven. So two was uh, two was Pisces. Five is Gemini. Seven is Leo. So Pisces, uh, two in Roman numerals, and I don't know, monocle. Monocle on a string. I think I've seen this somewhere. So Pisces, number two, and monocle. There we go. Or sperm, I guess. You can say sperm, too. There you go. So, do we have both pieces now? No, we just have the one. The medicine bottles had stains of rot on the labels, suggesting some greater shape. They just needed to be put in the right order. But for what purpose? So, right, we still have the cellar key, which I believe we get the valve. And that leads us to that back room to get the last piece for the boilerplate. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. I gotcha, I gotcha. You can put your gun away, Emily. It's fine. If you aren't going to do anything with the kid stabbed, you're not going to do anything to anyone else. Do, do, do. Um. Yeah. I was just looking around. Cellar was here. No, that's a blower. Cellar was over here. Can we go in here? No, we cannot. <sighs> that rat just blow up. Good. I guess this works too. Absolutely. Upstairs. Oh wait, can we go in the kitchen area? No, we cannot. It's literally from one place to the other. No, no. Yeah. I beat the door. Jeremy? <gasps> yeah, let me know. Alright guys, if you're you're like tryptophobic, just turn away for like the next ten seconds or so. I don't know if tryptophobia would <gasps> What the hell is that? Okay. What? There was a dead body in here. Did I just imagine that?
the body of DeSetto's clerk transformed into some eye-clad abomination before he suddenly disappeared. Surely it was all in her head, a horrible vision planted by the dark man. The dog man. Oh, Tay. <clears throat> After the boiler room puzzle. All right, let's see if I remember what to do. So remember, this goes here. Nope, this one goes down there. up there. Well, there. That goes down there. That goes there. And then that goes there. Not. Or that goes there. And that goes there. There we go. Guys, we got this. So, what is it? Five, seven, nine. So, five, seven. Oh, wrong way. The talisman is showing another move. Something is open. It worked. I'm in another one of Jeremy's dreams. Emily stepped out into the humid night and found herself recognizing the Lafayette Cemetery. She hadn't been here for years, she thought, and in a way, she still hadn't returned. This was something not quite the same. Hoping she would soon get to see her uncle, she set off to find the chapel mentioned in his book. Okay, and I'm actually going to call it here for now. Um, I think this is a good place to stop. So far, <laughs> underwhelming. Not what I thought was going to be Emily's campaign. Um, much like the... Uh, what is it called? Uh, Resident Evil 2. The, the remake, where it's like... Whether when you switch like the campaigns around, it's you're basically treading the same thing. Little things are different here and there, but I literally thought it was going to be like again whatever was going on with Carnby, and we see like Emily's view, like what the hell are you talking about? Like you're fucking crazy. I thought we were going to see like her point of view on everything, but yeah, now it's just switched around. It's it's unfortunate. It's. Uh, it, I, I really thought we were going to get some answers. But I don't think we are. 
I'm still wondering. I haven't looked it up, but I'm still wondering if there's multiple endings to this game. There has to be. There, there. I mean, again, we missed that one objective in uh, chapter four with Carnby, the given offering to the tree. That has to change something. Uh, I would assume there's something similar with Emily. I don't think it's the offering, just because we're not hearing any whispers from the tree. That that's my guess. Um, I don't know what we would do. Um, maybe it's something to find uh to Jeremy. Uh, maybe we actually like find Jeremy and like help him with something, help him come to terms with something. I, I don't know. I, I literally don't know. And it just makes me sad that I have to fight that fucking tree again. At the end of the game. But that's a problem for future me. As much as I've been shitting on the game, I really hope you guys have are at least having a blast watching me go through it. Uh, suffering through the game with me. Uh, enjoying my rants. Enjoying watching me suffer. Regardless... Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.